in the fourth. The Ding dong. Solo shot. Mariners are up four to two. Next batter, Paul Sorrento. Ready to take off. Deja vu. Back to back, Sorrento's eighth of the season, 5 2 Seattle. Still the sixth, Jose Cruz Jr. Thought he was going to make the club coming out of spring training, but the Mariners decided to let him start in Tacoma. But I think he's here to stay now. Third homer in the inning for the Mariners, 6 2 Seattle. Two out in the ninth. Alex Gonzalez now to the plate. And he goes to left. Jose Cruz Jr. Two words, complete package. Nice play out there. Lou Pinella says, hey, as Dave Campbell just did, the job is cruises so long as he continues to produce. Four times. In sports is to hit a baseball, Damon Mayshore. Easiest thing is to miss it, Matt Stairs. Clemens, more run support. Bottom of one, Otis Nixon, Orlando Merced, Joe Carter on, Carlos Delgado at the plate. Mm, Bob. He unloads on Mike Oquist offering second grand slam of the year for Delgado. Oquist, only two hits in the inning, but his two walks killed him. Clemens made good use of the run support. Watch the great framing job right there of Benito Santiago. Gets the inside corner call. Canseco doesn't like it. Top of four. Runners on second and third for Scott Spezio. No chance against the splitter. Eight different athletics struck out in the game. McGuire goes down. Eight Ks in eight for Clemens. However, he would lead the game after eight. Good news for the Bash brothers. Top of nine. McGuire facing Mike Timlin. Milk. The other way, his 23rd homer of the year off the facade of the second deck. Jay still lead, though, 4-1. to one. Runners now on first and third. Another former Red Sox pitcher, Paul Quantrill. The tying run is Scott Brocious. The 1-6-3 double play. Jays win 4-1. Clemens 11-0. He's the winningest pitcher in the American League. His ERA, 1.69. He's 5-0 this season after a Blue Jay. Jays up in the fourth. That is crushed. Carlos Delgado hit a grand slam off the A's last night. This is a solo shot, but majestic as always. And what about Robert Person? We finally found out why they gave up Olerud. Well, he, he's always had great stuff, but he's had a bad shoulder this year. Not today. Conseco breaking ball. McGuire breaking ball. Breaking ball to Spezio. Peter. Spezio again. Jason McDonald. Scott Broaches. Woo! No chance, guys. Eight strikeouts today for Robert Person. Soup can't even catch up. He's only talking. In the ninth, Paul Clark. Don Wenger to not Don Wager. Otis Nixon, frozen pizza, frozen defendant. Wenger to no hitter through five, which tells you that he didn't keep it. A's up four nothing in the fourth. Geronimo Baroja means goodbye. That's deep, and I don't think that's playable. Nine hits, seven runs allowed by Andujar, and just four. 13 homers for Baroja this year. Jays are down seven two in the sixth. Bases loaded. Aaron, let's get small. Gets Alex Gonzalez. Ninth inning, Jays down seven five. Bases loaded. Billy Taylor. It's Alex Gonzalez. He was 0 for and 5 for with three Ks and left the bases time. loaded twice. Still, that was not one of Taylor's better saves. Uh, yard work. His sixth of the year, and Joey doesn't waste time on the bases. Mariners up 2 0. Top six, same score. Junior. Two words liftoff. His 26, Mariners up 3 0. Pat Henkin doesn't give up home runs. Earlier this year, Junior hit three at Skydome. Mariners up 3-1. Bases loaded in a game. Juan Samuel to right. Buter. Right He's back. He's in. Norm Charlton. Mess. Samuels triple. Clears the bases. 4-3 Jays. He is 6 for 14. Lifetime against Charlton. Charlton got tossed. Training. Jays down 1-0 facing A-Rod and up the middle. Base hit. And we feel his pain. He would stay in the game, though. Same inning, runner on first, two outs. Edgar laces one, but Ed Sprague robs him to end the inning. Top of the fifth we go. Runner on second. Rodriguez at bat. Base hit center field. You can see as he swung, he touched his left side. As Brent Gabe comes across, we will tell you that Rodriguez pulled a muscle on his left side and would leave the game. Top of the seventh. Gates leading off Clemens, base hit. Line to center field, that's the base hit. The Your score is two to nothing at this point. Two batters later, one out, Joey Coral walks. Four. Next batter, Russ Davis. Base hit. Line to right field. The Charlie bases said he pulls up are loaded. Crowd, Next batter, Ken Griffey out. Jr. Trying to who has an, an average over 400 lifetime against the Rocket. Rips one down the right field line. Delgado couldn't get it, so he did, Del didn't get it. Gates and Cora come around. It's 4-0, and 
Mariners go on to win 5-1. to one. It only took until June 11th, but Eklund picks in the park there. Um, but the would Mitch June. Williams have been booed longer if he was there? Right Against Kurt Schilling, who last faced the Toronto in the 93 World Series Game 5. Joe Carter ropes a two-out double down the right field line. The Blue Jays, however, would not score. Top of the five, one nothing Jays. Pitcher Woody Williams struck out in his first at-bat. And he loops a base hit to right in his second at-bat. First ever hit by a Toronto pitcher in a regular season game. Who would score in a sack fly with Carlos Garcia to third? It's 2 nothing Jays. Bottom of the seventh, 2-1. to Bases juice for Greg Jeffries. Base hit, Joe Carter misplays, much to the delight of the Philly crowd. Two runs come in, 3-2 fills, they all want to win, 4-3. Jeffries drove in three runs, and reliever Wayne Gomes recalled from AAA earlier in the... Alton, with his team down a run, tees off on former Met Robert Person. Dalton seventh of the year, it's one apiece. Joe Carter, the man they despise in Philadelphia, facing Ryan Nye. Got a pitch up on a Mitch Williams, and Carter connects. A two-run jack makes it 3-1. to one. Jays in their next at-bat. Bottom of the seventh, Phillies rally again. They're within a run. They load the bases. Paul Spolgeri goes 2-0. Dalton gets the green light against the lefty. And Carter's to the warning track, but makes the grab. And the Jays close in on a 3-2 win. They're back to five against Jays. This was second and third in the first. To left, Nixon, Merced, in. For Joe Carter, career hit number 2,000. Blue Jays are up 2-zip, and the doubles wouldn't stop there. Alex Gonzalez, who had some problems hitting in the clutch, doubles to left. Then in the third, Charlie O'Brien comes to the plate, and he promptly doubles to left. And the next batter, Gonzo again. This time, his second double of the game goes the other way. Top of the six, Ed Sprague doubling down. Blue Jays, seven doubles on the day. More than enough for Pat Hankin. Uh, Pat Hankin, now seven and three, had once again had great stuff, great curveball, but today, with that little extra pop on his fastball, just the way he did in the World Series in 1993. Nine innings, six hits, one earner, unearned run. Jay Ryan Fusco, and he can turn around a fastball. Otis Nixon to the wall. It goes off the top and somehow stays in. Meantime, Denny Nagel spotted to a 2-0 lead and lose control. Well, uh, absolutely. He just pitched away early in the game. They're changing speeds and getting the pop-up. He threw his fastball away and got pop-ups. He's essentially a fly ball pitcher. You say, well, he can't do that in the American League, but the way he used both sides of the plate, changed speeds, he made it very easy. 18 fly ball outs in this game. Six innings. Still 2-0 Braves up and down for Clemens. First, down goes Larkhart, and then up goes Chipper Jones. Ninth of the year. Braves up 3 to nothing. Bottom of the ninth, two outs, and Nagel trying to complete the complete game, and the complete game is completed. Let's go to first to end it. Second shutout, three games, and the Braves win three zip, five hitter for Nagel. Clemens was awesome in the loss. 72nd time he had K-10 or more back. Six guy dome, right. top of the first two on two out for Ryan Quesco. A three-run shot, his 12th of the year. It is 3-0 a Braves. Top of the seventh, Braves up 4-3, two on for Kenny Lofton. Lines went off Ed Sprague's glove, scoring Jeff Blauser, 5-3 Braves, but all is not well. Lofton injured on the play. Take a look, he runs gingerly up the baseline. He's listed day-to-day -day with a sore groinal region. Two banners later, still two on, Braves up 8-3. Keith Lockhart lining one into the gap and ends up as a triple. Two runs score in the person of Mike Mordecai and Michael Tucker. It is 8-3 in favor of the Braves. Bottom eighth, Braves up 8-5, Sean Green. Sean Green going deep, a two-run shot to left off Mike Bilecki. Green's second home run of the game, 12th of the year, it's 8-7. And another Brave goes down, Michael Tucker. The official report here, he injured his right side. Vague enough for you? He'll be re-examined on Wednesday. Bottom nine, still 8-7. Two on, two out. Mark Wollers facing Joe Carter, who lines it to third, but the Braves get out of the game with a 5-4-3 double play, and they escape with the 8-7 win. It's Atlanta's second straight win over the Jays. With the roof open and sky dome, the fog did not affect Woody Williams. Raphael Belliard swinging. Williams five and a third, no hit innings. In the bottom of the third, two on for Carlos Delgado. He del got it. Off of John Smoltz, number 14 of the season, 4-0 you know? Jays. And Chipper Jones can't see anything through the fog, and for that matter, neither could Derrick Merrill. Calls everyone in in the bottom of the fourth, a 14-minute fog delay.
as we roll through the annals of fog history. 86, Red Sox at Indians, shortened by fog. May of 88, Oilers at Bruins, Stanley Cup Finals postponed. <laughs> December of 88, Fog Bowl 1, Eagles at Bears. June of 96, Royals at Brewers, delayed for over an hour. We're not done with the fog, oh, oh no. January 5th, Steelers at Patriots, AFC Divisional Playoffs, was played in the fog. Top of the seventh, bases juiced for the Braves. Down four runs, Jeff Blauser, the tying run at the plate. Rips one off of Derwood Merrill. Ryan Klesko, Eddie Perez come on down. Atlanta down now 4-2. They would trail 4-3 in the bottom of the seventh when Alex Gonzalez gets some insurance. The solo shot is sixth off of Smoltz, who is now winless in his last six starts. Toronto wins 5-3. When asked if the fog bothered him, Smoltz said, nah, just the fog in my head. One bad pitch. Smoltz last pitched in Toronto in game five of the 90. Number 24 in his hat, of course, for Eric Davis. Bottom first, one man on, Orlando to center. Otis Nixon would come around to score. Merced's RBI double, it's 1-0 Blue Jays. Could have been worse. Nixon to short. Talk about great short stops, Bordick. Well, he goes a long way to take this himself. That is quite a play, especially to get Otis Nixon. Pat Henkin, Brady Anderson, high heat, can't catch up to it. Top eight, one down, Anderson on second, Palmero at the plate. Ooh. Brady is done. There's two out. Next pitch to Palmero. Mm. Henkin does it. He goes the distance. Eighth win. Jays win. Three to nothing. Third shutout of the season for Henkin. Ties him with Carlos Perez for the Major League League. Palmero gone fishing. Tony Tarasco, you're next on the Price is Right. Look at the split here. He throws a cow. Oh! And dropped off the table. Jeffrey Hammonds, Rafa Dan down. Tarasco, fork ball. Show me Lenny Webster. Do we have to say he was nasty? We're not going to do it. Top eight. O's are down one zip. B.J. Suroff. Bases loaded. Clemens out. Gleesack in. Ooh. 2-1 O's. Baltimore had gone. 26 innings without scoring a run. Top nine, same score loaded, and Raffi off his shoe tops. Fordick, Anderson, and Alomar score. Alomar comes all the way from first base, signs that he's starting to run a little bit better. You see him there, but he's only got five stolen bases this year. Brady Anderson leads the club with 10. This is not the same. One on, two out for Cal Ripken, and he rips it down the left field line. Brady Bunch Anderson scores from second. Two doubles for Ripken. More on that in a moment. He now is 5-0-1 for his career. Jay's defense, and Carlos in Delgado DeVita. He's an iron butterfly with that play against Lenny Webster. But this defensive play was, well, just a lack of judgment. D.J. Serhoff rolls the ball down the first baseline. False ball, Jarek says, ah, I ain't gonna let it roll by. Go foul, wrong. It's turf, the infield isn't tilted. The ball rolls to the bag, and... So as a result, Jeffrey Hammond's next man up, and you pay for it. Small Jarek, good name for Scrabble. Bad day at the office. Hammond's an 0-2 pitch. Two-run shot is eighth of the year. Randall K. Myers on for save number 25 as the Orioles beat the Jays. Roger Clemens will not face his old mates in this series. Top of the seventh, game tied at three. Runner at first, one out. Will Cordero homers off Woody Williams, his 11th of the season, his first since returning to the lineup. And the Sox go up 5-3. Two batters later, Mike Stanley wraps one to left center. His fifth of the year, and the Red Sox go up 6-3. Now, Cito Gaston's got a pitcher in the bullpen, but he keeps Woody Williams in, and the next batter, Tim Naring, puts the Woody on it. His third hit of the game, his ninth homer, back-to-back -back the homers, three homers in the inning. Finally, Gaston takes Williams out after allowing seven runs, 12 hits in six and two-thirds. The Red Sox get a five-run seventh. Heathcliff Slocum strikes out Benito Santiago with a tying run at second in the ninth. Williams said... He would later score. Top of the second, score tied, not anymore. Grounds a single up the middle, he would eventually score. In the fifth, Sox up two, Marty Jansen, meet no more. Garcia Parra is no beanie baby. This is gone, his 11th of the year, put the Sox up by three. In the seventh, Garcia Parra needs a triple for the cycle. He'll settle for the single. He'd later score for the fourth time in the game. Top nine, still a shot for the cycle, needing a triple. That's a ground out to Ed Sprague. But no more Garcia Parra ties career highs for hits four and runs four. And more important for him and the rest of the Red Sox, Boston wins 9-6. Luis Andahar still hasn't won since last September. And Blue Jays reigning AL Cy Young champ Pat Henkin on the mound looked anything but. In the top of the first, no more Garcia Parra 
A solo shot is 12th homer of the year, 1-0 Red Sox. Tied at one top of the third, two out. Will Cordero at the plate. Pops it up to left field, Sean Green. Lost it. See what happened. Mm, I thought you were all right, Spider. <laughs> Jeff Fry scores its 2-1. The inning continues, and Reggie Jefferson would thankfully take the extra out and make him pay. Two-run shot, eighth homer of the year, 4-1 Red Sox. It was 13-11 Red Sox. Bases loaded, two out. Joe, Clark, Joe Carter busts out the walking stick, stick off Heathcliff Slocum. So the Blue Jays pull within one, but Slocum gets Carlos Delgado to end the, stop the insanity. Pat Henkin came into this game without giving up an earned run in 21 innings. He left the game charged with a season-high 11 runs on 13 hits in eight innings. Mike Stanley, Reggie Jefferson, Troy O'Leary, Darren Bragg all went yard. Tim Wakefield gave up five earned in five and two-thirds for the 13-12 win. Had to hit against Clemens. First inning, Clemens facing B.J. Surhoff. Whoa! He almost drills Surhoff after Surhoff called time. B.J. would later fly out. Same inning, Clemens facing Cal Ripken, who takes a called strike and then has some words for umpire Ted Barrett. Barrett then turns around and tosses Surhoff from the game for arguing from the dugout. Davey Johnson comes out to argue. Barrett's shoulder's going to get sore. He tosses Davey. Surhoff gets the final word, although he also gets tossed. Clemens to pitching well, facing Pete Incavilia, replacing Surhoff. Incavilia has struck out 17 times in 24 lifetime at bats against Clemens. Erickson also pitching well. Runners at second and third. He gets Ed Sprague looking scoreless after six. Bottom of the seventh, Clemens in trouble, facing Mike Bordick. Runners at second and third. He gets Bordick swinging. Nine strikeouts in seven scoreless innings for Roger. Top of the eighth, base is loaded. Armando Benitez facing Joe Carter, who gets the base hit to left. Tilson Brito and Otis Nixon run across the plate, and it's 2 nothing Jays. One final bright spot for the Orioles. Watch Sean Green slider right. Watch David DeLucci with the sweet diving catch. Watch it again. Is that the greatest catch of all time? No, no, I think Jim Edmonds still. Okay, DeLucci. <laughs> Jays win anyway. Final 3 nothing. Roger goes to 12-2. and two. Thanks to Carter's base hit. Clemens... Top of the first no score, Orlando Merced with a shot to right. David DeLucci makes a nice leaping catch. The rookie has been coming through defensively for the O's. Top of the fifth, 1-0 Blue Jays, two on. Merced with a single to left center. And Benito Santiago scores to give Toronto a 2-0 lead. Bottom of the fifth, Cal Ripken on first no outs. Rob Person gets the B.J. Suroff swinging. Then Jeffrey Hammond strikes out. Person gets out of the inning. To the bottom of the eighth, 2-0 Jays, one on, pinch hitter Tony Tarasco doubles down the right field line, DeLucci scores, and the O's down by just one. Cito Gaston pulls Person after the strong outing, in comes Dan Plesak, Person went seven and two-thirds, allowing three hits and a run. And then Dan gets Brady to ground a second, the Jays get out of the inning, giving up just one run. Bottom of the ninth, key play here, 2-1 Jays, two on, one out, B.J. flies to right, Merced, Makes the catch. He's got a great arm, but Robbie Alomar tests it anyway, and he flunks the test. Merced with his ninth assist this year, breaking a cardinal sin as well in baseball. Never made the on the mound. He's been struggling lately, and he gives up this solo home run to Orlando Merced. Jay's second solo homer of the inning. It's the third home run in the last eight games. They don't go deep very often, but Key was not himself. By the fourth, he was out of there with a slight hamstring pull, his shortest outing of the year. And Merced in the fifth, who threw out Robbie Alomar at third base to end last night's win, makes the diving grab here to Rob Lenny Webster. He's only good when he dives. Look out, he almost got doinked. Then that's Alomar doing it to him, getting revenge. By the seventh, it's now a one-run game. Carlos Garcia, a major disappointment since being traded from the Pirates, hitting 201 coming into this game. Homers for the first time as a Blue Jay, and there wasn't much doubt about it. Three solo shots in the ninth for the Jays. Garcia also playing outstanding Garcia. defense. Taking one away from Tony Tarasco. The, the Jays win at 5-2. to two. Woody Williams, they hadn't won any of his previous seven starts, wins for just the third time in 10. Guzman off the DL. Geronimo Barroa in his debut as an Oriole. Not one he'd like to remember. Takes a call third strike. Cal Ripken dives to rob Jacob Brumfield. And then in relief of Guzman, who's this, Peter? Kelvin Escobar. He might be the best pitching prospect along with Chris Carpenter in the Blue Jays organization. And they produced some pitches. He had an outstanding performance today. He struck up Barroa there. Charlie O'Brien this time tries to get at the other side of Ripken. Forget it. Off the knees again. He's got me on my knees. Bottom of the seventh. Two to one Baltimore. Barroa strikes up for the third time of the game. Bottom of the ninth. The Orioles 
Now down three to two and Baroa with one on and two out sends Otis Nixon back to the track. But Otis has room. The Jays with three sacrifice flies. That's why we didn't really bother to shoot. The American National Anthem being played. Two Canadian clubs were off. Pedro Martinez gets some great defensive support. Ed Sprague robbed by Rondell White. He's still up one to nothing. Matt Henkin. There he goes. Up out himself. Ryan McGuire and a diving Joe Carter with the spear. No hitter going, Harold, for Pedro. Well, he had a, the fastball you can see coming right into our view right there. Exploding up top. You're not going to catch up to it. Still 1 0 Montreal. David Segui will jack one off Henkin with Mark Rujelanik aboard. One time Expo Otis Nixon's got no clue. That falls in there for an assisted triple for Segui and gives him the 2 0 lead. No hitter had come apart. Then Carlos Delgado breaks up the shutout with a King Kong blast, his 15th of the year. They're pointing to where it went. It was over that deck. Then in the ninth, trying to hold on to the win. Nasty breaking pitch on Joe Carter. Ten strikeouts. Martinez gets his seventh complete game. Hank, it also goes the distance, especially of his. Guy to home. Jeff Juden going after his 10th win. He gets Joe Carter. One batter later, Ed Sprague. Down the line, the third base stands. 50,000 on hand to see it, and F.P. Santangelo says, watch this. Oh, what a catch, Dave. Yeah. Hey, what, this guy is such a great role player. He knows how to play the game. He's been the Expo's most valuable player this year. Absolutely, in every position. Rondell White off Roger Clemens. Ding dong, the pitch is dead. His 10th, and the Rocket doesn't like wearing the red uniform at all. Yuck, they're in a hole. And Juden, Dave, tries to get him out of it. He gets Carter for the second time, bottom of the eighth with his dad there watching. He's got a no-hitter through seven. The leadoff batter, Sean Green. Gone, no-hitter. Also, Blue Jays down two to one. Juden in the ninth, a single to Orlando Merced. That would do it for Jordan. He gives up the home run in the single. Felipe says, bring in Uget Urbina. Juden's father, standing ovation for his son who goes eight and a third, gave up just the two. Bottom nine, Delgado. Uh-oh. Who get her? Venus says, no problema. He had it the whole way. He stops the Blue Jays. Juden with no hit ball for seven innings comes out and gets his 10th win, and he does it against the man he grew up idolizing. Carlos Delgado, Delgado, Rich, your honors. Delgado. Thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. Oh, thank both of us. Let's thank Carlos. It's his 16th homer of the year, Blue Jays lead to zip. Blue Jays defense blew up. Chris Widger to the hole. Alex Gonzalez, nice grab. Take another look. Gonzalez lying out like through the looms on a clothesline. He was also two for six hitting. Rookie Vladimir Guerrero later with two on his fifth homer of the year. He was two for five on the night, hitting 318, 4 2 Montreal. Joe Carter, 114 career home runs at the Sky Dome. None of them opposite field until that one. He also broke an 0 for 16 slump with that 10th homer of the year. Game went to extras tied at six, bottom 13, two out. Carter, straight butter. Lazy fly ball to center. Rondell White dies but cannot get it. Otis Nixon scores. Joe C being an OG. He was three for five of the night, four RBI. Toronto wins it seven to six in 13 innings. They've done pretty well at the Sky Dome. Next up, one zip. You're already at the plate facing Woody Williams with a man on second. And the ground rule double scores. Chad Curtis, the Yanks are up two zip. Down 3-1, Delgado on third, Ed Sprague, David Wells with one down. Well, you're going well, you know. to give him a chance to green light and break out of it. He chases a bad pitch. And when you're going bad, you start chasing pitches that are out of your zone. And that's what happened to Sprague. That was ball four. Wells, screen. No. Take the bat, take the helmet, glove, back to the bench. Yanks win at 3-1. They're 23-8 and eight over the last 31. And goodbye, as did Rodgers. In this game, top of the first to the game, Juan Guzman starting for Toronto, facing Wade Boggs with Derek Jeter on second. Boggs swinging, then Bernie Williams. Likewise, Guzman would get out of the inning by making Tino Martinez fly out. David Cohn started for the Yankees in the bottom of the second. Ed Sprague with a runner on first. Pat Kelly with a fantastic unassisted double play. Runs were hard to come by in this game. Still no score. Guzman on a pitch count. Only pitched five innings, striking out eight, giving up one hit. Bottom of the sixth with Orlando Merced at the plate. David Cohn and Joe Girardi can't get together with the pitch. And normally that's trouble. And Orlando Merced steps back in and steps into it. His eighth home run of the season. 
One nothing Toronto. Cone bombing. And after the inning, Cone is describing the miscommunication. So I guess he's communicating the miscommunication. Kelvin Escobar shut down the Yankees after Guzman left in the top of the ninth. Yanks down one nothing. Jeter looking, and then Boggs looking to end the game. Escobar is two and zero oh in two appearances this year, coming in for Guzman. Guzman and Escobar combined to to toss a two-hitter on the Yankees on the 14-year anniversary. Bottom five, one nothing Yanks. Santiago on first, and Tilson Brito past Hayes at third. Santiago coming around. Watch the relay. Chad Curtis to Charlie Hayes to Joe Girardi. Well, there's a double relay again, and he hits the second man and guns him at the plate. When you line up properly, you give yourself a chance. Great throw by Hayes. O'Neill. We'll talk about what he's going to be doing on Tuesday. He lines over the outstretched glove of Sean Green over the wall. Ground rule double. Two-run score, 5-0 Yanks. And Pettit was nasty. Strikes out Ed Sprague to end it. Yanks win 8-zip. Six-hit shutout for Pettit. First career shutout. Just a big win, he says, for me. I felt like I hadn't been pulling my weight. Cecil now with 299 career ding-dongs. Derek Jeter. Schwing! Oh, he nearly gets decapitated by the Rockets. <laughs> Jeter goes 0 for 4. Three batters later, Clemens. Tino Martinez. Out. Roger. Three. Rocket to the bench. Bottom of the second. First and second. No score. Sean Green. Runners to left. Delgado is on second. Not anymore. He scores. Green to second. Safe all around. Toronto up one zip. Yanks try to claw back. In the fourth, Tito Martinez at second. Two nothing. Oh, down goes Cecil, who has had horrible numbers against the Rocket. Tito. Quiet up until this time. No. Tito K three times in the game. Clement double digit Ks. Frustrated Yankees starting to get to umpire Al Clark. Uh oh. O'Neill gone. No Tory wants to talk. Talk this, Roger Clements gets to 13, first in the majors to do it. One back, Cordero took batting practice but didn't get in the lineup, but Mo Vaughn, who had missed 20 games, going up against his old teammate, Roger Clements, who will pitch Saturday afternoon's game against his old team. But Joe Carter continues to love to hit in Fenway. This goes the other way for a grand slam off Tom Gordon to bust open a one-all game. Here comes Mo Vaughn, the other way. Off Paul Ponchel, his old teammate, over the screen. We're tied at five, his 21st of the year. And the eighth, Cordero came up to hit. For Jefferson, number 12, Wilfredo Cordero. A mixed reaction for Cordero. There were boos in there, but cheers as well. He worked the count for two strikes, and then Dan Plesek gets a nice assist from Carlos Garcia, who snares the line drive. The Sox still led 6-5. to five. Heathcliff Slocum came in to try and save it. Former Cub against former Cub. Carter wins the war. Into the diamond. Otis Nixon, the long-ago Red Sox, ties the game at six. Five RBIs in the night for Joe Carter. Leaping grab by Nomar Garcia Parra off the shift on Carlos Delgado. Bovon, who had an error earlier in the game, can't handle this hot shot by Garcia. His throw home was in time, but the tag is a little late, and Sean Green gets under. Butch Henry got into it with umpire Joe Brinkman on a call third strike. He got tossed to the tenth. Man, second one out. Momentum. Vaughn with a shot up this middle, and Garcia Parra ties it at seven. Three is three RBIs for Vaughn, and then with the bases loaded, Garcia Parra draws, draws a walk from Mike Timlin, who walked four in the 11th to mm. blow the game. Red Sox win it 8-7. to seven. Vaughn Eshelman. It's Carlos Garcia on basically the same pitch. Garcia, though, didn't like it. Avery, seven and a third, his longest outing of the year. But Dan Vaughn Eshelman against Carlos Delgado. Runner on second. Loop single to left. Orlando Merced scores. Cuts the lead to 4-3. Now runners on first and second. John Wazen in to face Sean Green. Oh, Green went the other way off the wall. Two runners come in to score. Toronto goes up 5-4. It's still 5-4. Top of the ninth, two runners on, and Delgado rips one down the line as the Boston bullpen collapses. Toronto gives up. Uh, goes on to win 8-4 is your final. Hintkin, his lead got a mixed reception. There were cheers, there were boos, and that would change. Bottom one, Clemens facing no more Garcia Parra, and Garcia Parra starts it off right for Boston the opposite way, and Boston fans would love that moment, but that would change. After a John Valentin double, Clemens, old friend Mo Vaughn hits him.
The bases are loaded. You see Modi didn't even look at Roger. Didn't even look up at him. Will Cordero up with the bases full? Nobody out. Cordero the killer? No way. Not against Clemens. And after a Reggie Jefferson fielder's choice, Troy O'Leary. Just watching. Two hits, two Ks, one run after one inning. Bottom second, Clemens settles down. Five Ks after two for Roger. Clemens strikes out the side of the fourth. Nine Ks after four. Top of the fifth. Aaron Seeley pitching well in his own right. Charlie O'Brien can't find the curve. Seeley with nine Ks after five. And then Sean Green is sky dancing. A two-run home run off of Seeley. His eighth home run of the year. Jays up three to one. Bottom eight now. Clemens facing Garcia Parra already, who struck out twice, and Clemens gets him for a third time. 14th K of the game, tying a club record for Clemens. Next batter, John Valentin goes down swinging. There's the new club record for Clemens. 15. He wasn't done. Mo Vaughn, 16. If you notice, there are hardly any boos. Boston fans now cheering their ex-hero, Roger Clemens. Three to one. Along right off right of Woody Williams, line, Orlando Merced, the chase, Merced, and the, the crash. And makes the nice Cincinnati. catch. Sox down two, bottom seven, Reggie yeah, Jefferson. Well Merced right after it again. Line, this time, Merced. crashing wasn't enough. He went into the stands. It's a home run, though. Jefferson's nine. Bottom eight, same score, one out. Dan Plesic strikes out Mo Vaughn. Cito Gaston goes to the righty. Mike Timlin to face Will Cordero. Cordero still looking for it. Bottom nine, two outs, tying run on third. Escobar on to face pinch hitter Scott Hatterberg. Hatterberg locks it. This is an Orlando highlight thing here. Merced runs it down. Escobar's first major league save, and the Blue Jays win 3-2. to two. The difference, Sean Green. I'll be doing a little scoreboard watches, watching the Yanks in a tight game, and watching Scott Kamenicki save face on the liner by Carlos Garcia. Then he retired eight straight batters through the early going, but then Carlos Delgado gives him a facial of a different guy. Into the right field bleachers, his 18th of the year, Jays took a 3-2 lead. Randy Anderson, where have all the homers gone? This one off Robert Person goes on to Utah. His eighth of the year, remember he had 50 a year ago, but that's a big one, ties in the three. Bases juiced, Tony Tarasco on a pitch. He rips a shot into right field. Hal Ripken and B.J. Surhoff come in the score here. The Orioles take a 5 3 lead. Then Joe Carter launches a shot off Terry Matthews in the eighth. All the way to the wall. Where's Brady Anderson? Bam! To make the leaping catch. With the help of his fans to let him grab it instead of gluttonously going for a souvenir. Yes, they are well behaved in Camden Yards. And that's how you snap a six game with losing streak they had. And a blazing sun, and he has found the long ball bat this past week. Off Juan Guzman. Curls in to lead off the game for the 27th time in his career with a home run. That's his ninth of this season. And Lenny Webster pulverizes Guzman. That's two home runs in the day. B.J. Surhoff also went deep off Guzman, whose batting average against is under 200, but they played long ball against him this evening. Jeffrey Hammonds also got into the act just barely over Joe Carter. How about Sean Bosky, Peter? Right. Unexpected. He did a nice job. Got them within one out of six innings. A pretty crisp breaking ball there. Here in the inside court. Hey. After losing three in a row to Milwaukee, they won two games with Kamenicki and Bosky. It's a very important way to right the ship, go back to Jimmy Key tomorrow. On the Rangers, he would sit in the dugout and get some early support. Second batter of the game is Orlando Merced. He takes John Burkett deep to right field for his ninth home run of the year, but they wouldn't stop there. Two batters later, it's Carlos Delgado. If this stays fair, it's gone. It stays fair. It's gone. 2 nothing Blue James. When Clemens got to the mound, he was good. Will Clark won't be staying. Later, Ranger fans asking for Clark's revenge, but Clemens has other ideas. Top seven. Jays let it 5-1, 2 on. Delgado to the plate. Clemens looking on. And Delgado's done it again. Takes the offering from Hernandez. Deep to right. His second of the game is 21st of the season. 8-1 Blue James. Bottom nine, two out. Clemens looking to Finish what he started. Henry Mercedes strikes the post. Ten strike out of the game. 15th win of the year. Blue Jays take it 9-1. Not all the news good for Toronto. Juan Guzman goes on the DL with a nine nine. And bottom of the second. And one out. Tim Seminole on first. Garrett Anderson at the plate against Woody Williams. Anderson flies to right. Orlando Merced makes the catch. And he throws him out at first for the double play. Top of the third. No score. Alex Gonzalez. Homers to left field and does it quickly. His eighth of the year. Watson not happy. You can understand it. Jays up two to one. Bottom of the seventh. Angels down two to one. Gary DeSarcina up with two on. 
The wild pitch it moves Luis Alasea and Chad Cooter up a base. Same at bat, DeSarcina gets the walk to load the bases. Williams not happy. Next batter, Tony Phillips. Grounds to Gonzalez, who throws to Tilson Brito for the force at second. Williams pumped. Bottom nine, Angels still down 2-1. to one. Salmon on first. Kelvin Escobar pitching to Garrett Anderson. Salmon tracks to steal second, but Benito Santiago guns him down. Salmon cannot believe it. Terry Collins argues the call to no avail. Salmon is distraught. The Jays win, and the Angels' streak ends at 10. Most in the Jays. This game works the other way. Early in this one, Jays already up 1-0. Tilson Brito facing Jason Dixon, and the throw too late from Luis Alisea. Take a look at the replay. Alisea bobbles the ball and can't make the play. And that's important because the next hitter is Alex Gonzalez. With Brito at first, Gonzalez whacks one hard to left. It is high, deep, and gone. The Jays lead Jason Dixon three to nothing. Now to the four. Jays up four nothing. Tim Salmon at the plate with a man on. Salmon drills one to deep left, his 17th of the year. That cuts the lead to four to two. Jimmy Lairitz hits a homer to make it four to three. Then Alisea facing Paul Quantrill with two out. Salmon at third. Benito Santiago can't handle the pitch. Salmon scores. The game's tied at four. Bottom of the ninth, two out. Tony Phillips at bat with Alisea at second. Phillips 0 for four in the game. Quacks one to left field. Alisea scores, and the Angels win this one 5-4 after trailing four to nothing. They win. They cut the Mariners' lead back. Jack Howell's at third, Ed Sprague's at home, O'Brien's going to first. Check out the replay. Tilson Brito, did he beat the throw? Yep. Cito Gaston comes out, says, you know what? I saw through the shades, he beat the throw. Gaston gets tossed. Luis Alisea, power hitter. Driven to right. Perez going back and look at the glove and Three for three for Alisea, RBIs 29 and 30. Garrett Anderson, bottom seven, two on, right up the middle. Talk about trades. Garrett Anderson's name constantly comes up. Erstad and Edmund come plateward, 8-5 Halos. Angels go on and win, final score at 9-5. As always, up in a tight game, one to nothing, but Pat Ankin gives up this blast to Dave Nilsson, his 13th of the year, ties it at one. Now in the seventh, Hankin facing Matt Miski. Got one up to him, but in. Does he get enough of it? Carter climbs the wall, but can't get there. Brewers take the two to one lead. 10 to 11 home runs given up in the last six games by Hankin. Mike Fetter's trying to blow one by Sean Green with two aboard, and Green goes the other way and answers the home runs by Miski and Nilsson, and the Blue Jays pull it out. Hankin moves to 10 and 7. The won two in a row. Post. And Sotis Nixon leading off drag. Go. More defensive woes for Vini in the first. Merced to Vini. Where's Valentin? Is he throwing a spitball to him? Two batters later, Delgado. Granny! 22nd of the year and a club record third grand slam this season. Jays win 5-4. There's your energies. And Toronto, Alex Gonzalez against Glendon Rush. Ten home runs of the year for the Blue Jays shortstop. Break a one-all tie in the fifth. In the seventh, Emil Benitez on second. Robert Person struggling again. He's facing David Howard. Makes a diving grab, though to stop the runner from advancing. Well, Howard's trying to pull this ball. Look at the effort to hold him on. Make a great catch right there. Three second, Quantrill got Jays out of that inning. Then, Kelvin Escobar against Chili Davis, who made me in his last days as a See, rough day for Carlos Delgado. In the fifth, Chili Davis grounded a first off Delgado's glove. Bip Robert scores. Delgado made two errors, struck out three times. Dean Palmer, newly acquired, making his Royal debut. He's traded last night from Texas. Double down the left field line. Bell and Davis score. Palmer, three ribbies. Royals up 5-2. Bottom eight. Jays down 5-2 with two men on. And Sean Green crushes one. Three run shot off of Hector Carrasco. We're tied at five. Next batter, Benito Santiago. He has clout. His second homer of the game, and that ball is out of here for sure. Jays win 6-5. Rosado, Jose for the Royals. Palmer at third. Robert Perez grounds at third. Dean Palmer made the stop, but then a little too much arm for the former Ranger. Carlos Delgado gives Henkin a 1-0 lead. And then Yamil Benitez continues to show a strong bat. The rookie takes Henkin yard, ties the game at two. 
Then in the ninth, the go-ahead run at second. Johnny Damon singles the right off Paul Quantrill. The pinch runner, David Howard, breaks the tie. The Royals hold on and win it three to two. Some Blue Jay fans couldn't stand to look. Peter Benitez is a fine. He is absolutely came out of back in April. That's what it looked like. Different story. A couple of hot pitchers in the mound. Steve Woodard, though, in his very first battery faces in the majors. Otis Nixon against the minor league phenom leads off with a double. Then he has to face Joe Carter. Strikes him out on four pitches. Then gets Carlos Delgado, and Woodard escapes with Nixon on base. Clemens going for his 17th win, gets Fernando Vina. Next batter is Jose Valentin. Derwood says he went. Valentin, no doubt about him. Ten strikeouts for Clemens. How about Woodard, who idolized Clemens growing up? Paint in the corner on Carter. And then the Brewers offense finally gets something on Clemens. Jeremy Burditch up the box. It's home the first run of the game in the four. Harold, how about Woodard? Well, Gary, he did. We're going to break it down here in a little bit, but he got the breaking ball working, the change up, and then he featured a nice fade and change against the left hander. Very tough tonight. You can't ask for a better outing than this. Clemens strikes out 10. Woodard strikes when Jeff Cirillo lines down the right field line. If you can trust yourself when it goes over Juan Samuel's head and off the wall for a double. Jeff's 28th two-bagger of the year. Two batters later, runners on second and third. Jack Voigt. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting. Cirillo and Dave Nelson score. Voigt. And yet not look too good nor talk too wise. Voigt slides in for a second triple of the season. 3-2 Milwaukee. Top four, Jays down 4-2, two, two, two on, no outs if neither foe nor loving friend can hurt you. Alex Gonzalez grounds to third. Jeff Cirillo tags the bag, fires to second. Mark Loretta turns to beat Gonzalez by a step for the five. Four, three, triple play. First Brewer triple play in 18 years. Top seven, 8-2 Brewer, Cirillo D. Tilson Brito grounds to third, Cirillo, which is more, you'll be a man, my son. Brewer's going to win at 9-3. The last Milwaukee triple play may... O'Brien, slow roller. Mercedes gets it with a bad throw. He won. O'Brien a second. He wouldn't score. Bad throw. Was it a good throw? No, that was a bad throw. That's right. He won. One is a uh, singles the pitcher's position there, Harold. Bottom of the fifth, no score with Jeremy Burnett's on second. Gerald Williams against Woody Williams, and Gerald gets the better of it, a two-run shot. Brewers at a 2 nothing lead. Jay's threatening. Otis Nixon on second. Mike Fetters against Carlos Delgado. And Fetters whips Delgado to end the game in dramatic fashion. Williams, Williams grounds to short, but Tilson Brito boots it. Inning stays alive. Brewers would score go up one zip. Brewers had Jose Valentin at short. He had nine assists in the game. Scare in the seventh, because Valentin would take a pitch off the bottom of his foot. That looks like it hurts. But you have no padding there. That's just hitting leather on the toe. Bottom of the eighth, Brewers up 3-2. Mike Timlin delivers to Todd Dunn. Dunn unloads, get out of here. It's third, and the Brewers win 4-2. And there's Bernie the Brewer hanging out. Here's how you hit a triple. Brian Hunter, let me clear my throat. Na -na 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 -na. Lashing to right field, Orlando Miller scores. Hunter, serious wheels, checks in at third for his fifth triple of the year. He also leads the bigs with 54 stolen bases. Three zip tigers, Hunter would score later in a wild pitch. What's with all the cats, by the way? I think Felix is mistaking the warning track for kitty litter. Mm. Bottom four, Joe Carter. Mistakes left field for Jim Edmonds territory, robbing Phil Nevin. Just not quite as good as Phil. Carter, two for four, hitting at the plate. Meow, meow. Lock that gate, please. Top eight, Travis Fryman displays his cat-like reflexes. Oh, boy. Okay, as he steals a shot from Otis Nixon. In